Rabindranath Tagore, a renowned poet of the Bengali language during his time, gained significant recognition for his exceptional short stories. One of his notable works, My Lord the Baby, bears resemblance to the style of Anton Chekhov, a distinguished master of the genre. The story unfolds in two parts, with part one introducing Rikaran, a 12-year-old boy who leaves his village to serve a man belonging to his own caste. Rikaran becomes the personal attendant of the man's son, Anukul, and remains dedicated to his service from infancy until the day the boy departs for college. As Anukul gets married, Rikaran is assigned as the servant to Anukul's newborn son, referred to as the little master in the story. Rikaran takes immense pride in his work and finds immense joy in caring for the child. The narrative highlights several instances where Rikaran's delight is evident as he reads to the young boy. The child's first steps are considered a significant milestone, and Rikaran plays with him tirelessly day and night. When the child utters the words Babie, Mama, and Chana, his way of addressing Rikaran, Rikaran's happiness knows no bounds. Anukul purchases a small go-kart for his son and adorns him with lavish silks, golden ornaments, and bracelets. However, during the rainy season, the child grows restless being confined indoors. One day, when the rain subsides, Rikaran puts the child in the cart and takes him to the riverbank. The boy spots a beautiful tree adorned with flowers, and his desire for one becomes apparent. Rikaran attempts to divert his attention by showing him birds and various other distractions, but the child remains determined. Eventually, Rikaran instructs him to stay in the cart, forbids him from approaching the water, and ventures in to retrieve the desired flower. However, upon returning, Rikaran discovers that the child is missing. As evening falls and Rikaran fails to return with the child, Anukul and the mother set out in search of them. They discover Rikaran running frantically along the riverbanks, repeatedly calling out Little Master. In anguish, questioned about what happened, he insists that he knows nothing. Despite their promises of anything he desires, Rikaran remains unable to provide any answers. Consequently, he is dismissed from the house. The mother confides in Anukul, sharing her suspicion that Rikaran might have abducted the child, possibly with the intention of selling him to the gypsies who were rumored to be in the vicinity. She points out that the baby had valuable gold ornaments, solidifying her belief. In part two, Rikaran returns to his village, where his wife gives birth to a son named Falna, but tragically passes away soon after. Initially, Rikaran harbors intense resentment towards his own child, perceiving him as a potential replacement for the recently lost little master. He experiences profound guilt at the thought of finding happiness in the aftermath of such a tragedy. However, over time, he grows affectionate and loving towards his own son, just as he was with the little master. Nevertheless, an unsettling development occurs. As his son grows, begins to walk, and exhibits typical baby behaviors, Rikaran becomes increasingly reminded of the little master. His son's actions bear an uncanny resemblance, leading him to believe that the little master has been reincarnated within his own home. Rikaran considers three indisputable facts, i. The new baby was born shortly after the little master's death. 2. His wife could not have accumulated enough merit to give birth to a child in her middle age. 3. The new baby walks with a similar toddle and utters Babier and Mama. While the logic behind his conclusion is not entirely sound, he recalls the mother accusing him of stealing her child. If indeed the newborn is the little master reincarnated, Rikaran believes he deserves the accusations. In the final sequence of the story, Rikaran begins spoiling Felna, mirroring Anukul's treatment of the little master. Rikaran exhausts his limited resources to dress Felna in luxurious satin attire and enroll him in prestigious schools, even though he cannot afford it. When he visits Felna at school, the other students find amusement in his rural upbringing, questioning how someone as elegant as Felna could have a father so unsophisticated. As time passes, Felna starts demanding more money, and Rikaran finds himself unable to fulfill his requests. He decides to visit the city where Anukul works as a magistrate and confesses that he had lied about the little master's disappearance. Rikaran reveals that he had kept the child all along and now wishes to rectify his actions. Anukul, skeptical of the claim due to the lack of proof that Felna is the little master, is swayed by his wife's wholehearted acceptance of the child. She believes Felna is their own, leading them to send Rikaran away. 
The story concludes with Anukul sending money to Rikaran's village, only to discover that there is no longer anyone by that name residing there. My Lord the Baby, along with many of Tagore's other short stories, serves as a precursor to sprawling tales of Indian families like Rohinton Mysteries of Fine Balance and several novels by Salman Rushdie. The central themes revolve around duty, particularly the duty owed to one's master, son, and father, as well as sacrifice. Tagore's literary achievements, including winning the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913, have earned him tremendous acclaim from numerous critics. While his stories possess a straightforward quality, they have not been analyzed as extensively as thematically complex and ambivalent tales, such as those penned by Kafka and Chekhov. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.